Hey everyone, it's Ivan with KidBadger.com, here to bring you another course review, and today we're talking about the Night Vision course by Amtac Shooting. If you're unfamiliar with Amtac Shooting, it is a training company owned by Bill Rapier. Incredibly talented individual, he retired out of the Navy and spent pretty much his entire time over there in the teams, the lion's share of which over with Team 6. Huge, vast amount of knowledge there. And as far as courses, pretty much the entire spectrum, whether it's responsible armed citizen, kind of introduction to pistol with a huge bent on like practical application, i.e. drawing concealed, all those things, integrative combatives, all the way up to obviously night vision. So I had the good fortune of attending the three day night vision course up here in North Idaho and started out kind of crawl, walk, run. I really appreciated how the night vision course was set up crawl, walk, run. Because of essentially the amount of daylight up in North Idaho in the fall, class started around noon and then ended usually around nine or so at night. And what that gave us was basically half the day during daylight and then the other half of the day during hours of darkness because sun sets around like 4.30. With that, first day was basically dedicated to pistol. So initially went out there on the range and started going through, getting reps, working those good fundamentals with respect to pistol work there on that range. Finished out that first half of the day just ironing out those good pistol fundamentals before breaking for dinner. During which time, of course, went, had some dinner. There was actually a really cool tent that was set up with a stove jack, wood stove in there because the range is relatively remote. And during dinner, kind of went over a gear setup as far as night vision equipment, whether it's helmets, things along those lines. And after that, it's time to get after it. So headed back down to the range to basically work through all those different drills we had done during daylight, but now under hours of darkness, under night vision. Some of the big takeaways from that night was being able to basically manipulate your tools, again, in darkness. It's really easy to, at the range, if you wanna look down, double check something as far as just even conducting reloads or anything like that, but when everything's blacked out, definitely add some things into the mix. And worked on pretty much everything we could depending on people's equipment. So by way of example, if people had pistols equipped with lasers, obviously get to work that at night, or for that matter, infrared illuminators. And ideally, if people were running dots on their pistols, like I was, I had a Gen 3 Glock 17, my old duty pistol, but it was cut for an RMR, so I was shooting that. And what we also had the ability to do was actually shoot passive. So using just essentially the dot on your pistol to acquire and engage targets, which depending on essentially weather and those factors can actually be really difficult. We were fortunate in the sense that we had inclement weather. It basically rained that entire first day. And being able to use that equipment, night vision equipment, kind of opened up some doors for different experiences, i.e. when you have a lot of, or when you have almost zero illumination, like outside illumination, depending on the dot you're running, can be really hard to actually be able to shoot passive because your dot might be too bright then you need some sort of supplemental illumination and no, it was a really cool learning experience that first day day two was largely structured the same way with the added benefit of the kind of jungle run course that bill has set up up there so amazing actual range facility that he has and is continuing to improve 
but part of it is essentially this road that kind of works its way down to more or less like the flat range and throughout the entire road deep into the woods at different distances obscured are a number of targets some set up for pistol and then ones usually further back set up for rifle to include on both sides of the road so we had the opportunity since we didn't get to the previous day to actually do some run and gun starting at the top and working our way down basically engaging all these different targets which it was really cool one of the things that definitely reinforced coming out the other side was being able to call your shots As I mentioned about calling your shots, sometimes if you knew that you were on target, you had a good trigger press, all those things, you would not get the desired effect. And so rather than a lot of courses of fire set up on like a flat range with cardboard, it's like, okay, cool. Like this is the round count, whatever, shoot that. Whereas here you're shooting for effect. And so you have to continue shooting for effect. And if you never shot through obstacles, whether it's just like a little pine bough or something like that. If it is quite a ways from the target, like the bullet has to go another 10, 15 yards, it may very well deflect it. Whereas if it only has to travel like one or two yards past it, you'll probably get your hit. And so if you can call your shots, being able to shoot one, you either just keep going and you will eventually cut down whatever is obstructing your shot. Or maybe it might be best to just change elevation or change your angle some, open up a free lane but really awesome running through that course of fire I would rather just have a from there hit. continued on same so thing as the first day far. working through all those fundamentals with rifles initially going over how and why to establish a really good zero and confirming our zeros with the optics we had to include any day lasers that may be slave to the ir lasers and continuing on get in some good reps in Let's with the carbine in all the way out and then slowly squeeze the trigger. If you cannot break the shot within three to five seconds, start over again. Go finger off the trigger, take one or two breaths and then start over again. But you should be able to break that shot within three to five seconds. After shooting through dusk, time to break for dinner. Once again, we went back up and kind of went over again, kind of the lecture portion as far as setting up gear and the idea of how to set up illuminators, lasers, things along those lines on your rifles so that they're accessible depending on whether you're switching shoulders, anything along those lines. And then after that, get back after it under knots. Again, really cool being able to work those same fundamentals, just moving into nighttime and essentially having those reps from earlier in the day and getting to prove them out under nods. Day three was the final day of the course and the culmination. We got to start out with another one of the kind of jungle runs down that road, this time again, using our carbines. Definitely a little bit challenging with the gun I was using, high point carbine, nine millimeter, 
feel like my zero shifted maybe a little bit, so turned into some Kentucky windage, but went ahead and worked through it. On the right, down low, and then left through the trees. Good hit, left through the trees. Little lane, two by four across. Good hit. Good. And in between the trees there. Nice. Yo. Then on that final day, during those daylight hours, we got to work on some kind of kind of putting it all together to include transitions going from shooting our carbine and switching out drawing out our pistol and got to work through all of that stuff to include some actually pretty cool shoulder switches not only just shoulder switches as far as being able to reinforce those good fundamentals being able to shoot off either shoulder but also some kind of barricade shooting think about basically pying over a corner something along those lines which I had actually never been exposed to and really appreciated. it. And to that end, actually fast forward a couple days, actually had the chance to try it, actually going through a shoot house at night under nods and yeah, pretty cool technique. And once again, after we had broken for dinner, went back down, under nods at night and got to work back through all of those, whether it was transition drills, moving from shoulder to shoulder, drawing out our pistol, or working in some of that essentially barricade work as far as being able to clear corners, doorways, things along those lines. And then the entire thing culminated with some little partner rundowns starting not too far up the hill, but the opportunity for people to work in teams and make their way down engaging different targets at different distances, whether it's pistol targets, again, under nods, either passive or with IR lasers, illuminators, as well as rifle targets. And finally getting down and engaging all the targets kind of at a distance with carbines. Overall, personally, I think it was an amazing course. One thing I really appreciated is it was three days long. Well, I recognize that might not always be practical for certain people's lifestyles and things along those lines. Work usually gets in the way of things, but night vision is such a deep subject that, yeah, like unless you already have a really good foundation moving into it, then I think three days is really ideal. And I definitely appreciated having a good half of the day to work through everything in daylight. And then the next half to actually work on those same things and reinforce them on through the night. Really liked the way the class was structured. And yeah, learned a lot of good information. Night vision is one of those things where in until you actually go to a course, you kind of don't know what you don't know. Like you're probably just kind of playing around at night on the range and that can be fun. But as far as like, yeah, no, the waters are deep. Bill Rapier, incredibly talented person who, who knows how many hours he spent under nods, like operationally overseas, Iraq, Afghanistan, all those places and does a really good job of basically taking that information and making it consumable for his students. Hey guys, Bill Rapier here with Amtac Shooting. One of the courses that we offer is the night vision course. What you can expect from the night vision course, three days of solid pistol carbine fundamentals and then taking those fundamentals and applying them at nighttime. Also, we'll discuss setting up your kit for night fighting uh, setting up your helmet, pros and cons of night vision versus thermal, pros and cons of passive aiming versus lasers, uh, and a bunch more. Prereqs for the night vision course. You need to have a baseline level of competency with both pistol and carbine. Very important that you have that 
at least the beginning of unconscious competence with both of your tools because we're going to be doing half of the class at night. So if that built-in straight finger safety on and muzzle discipline isn't there, it can cause some problems. To sign up for the night vision course or any of the other courses that I teach, go to AntacShooting.com. Look forward to training with you guys in the future. If you're looking to get into night vision, I would encourage you to take that Amtac shooting night vision course. Really good course with respect to if you're coming into it from like zero, foundational information, tons of it there, or even if you have some experience, you're probably gonna get some good stuff out of it. And as far as kind of prereqs, I know Bill spoke to it some, and I will kind of reiterate, one of the important things is just familiarization and competence and confidence with your equipment. So being able to conduct reloads and things like that, it's not really a big deal. And some people kind of sideline it or they work it sometimes at the range. It becomes a much bigger deal when you can't see what's going on at night. And so being able to have that fundamental competency with being able to do those different manipulations it's definitely important, keeps everyone safe as far as like, oh yeah, I remembered to safe my weapon like as soon as I came off target. Like all of those things, definitely crucial. And one thing past that, which pretty much goes for any course, is to the best of your ability, make sure all your stuff is zeroed beforehand. What that translates into is the class as a whole just gets to push through even more information. Because sometimes zeroing can be a bottleneck. I will say, a lot of the night vision, especially like IR lasers, not the most friendly things to zero, especially if they aren't like slave to a visible green laser. But as best you can, get all that stuff squared away beforehand, whole class will move faster. Overall though, great experience at that course. And again, go over to amtacshooting.com if you want to check out that or any of the other courses. And as always, thanks for joining us at kitbadge.com. Look forward to seeing you next time.